Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm gonna tell you about the best and worst asteroid port on any home system in one game. The early days of arcades were about innovation as much as about profit and Asteroids did just that. It innovated in a fresh at the time video game market and in the same time brought huge profits to both arcade owners and its creators. On one hand it was considerably more advanced and expansive game than other arcade titles at the time, on the other it stuck to extremely addictive and yet simple formula of getting just a little bit more difficult with each stage, gluing players to machines for hours on end. You know what's also as simple as that formula? Hitting that big red subscribe button below. It may not seem like much, but it helps a lot. Amiga's take on Asteroids in the impressive form of Stardust by Bloodlust, a Finnish developer, is all that and much much more. It's Asteroids on steroids. The basic premise is identical, fighting and surviving through increasingly more difficult levels, and there are 36 of these, with interplanetary warp tunnel levels between the packs of them and so-called special mission stages that play a bit like Frost, another assault as Asteroids classic. The sounds and music of Stardust are of very high quality, and both fit together quite nicely too. Which, even if it will sound a bit odd, is quite unfortunate, because their reception and appreciation is totally dwarfed by Stardust's incredible visuals. The game does not look like your typical 16 or even 32 color Amiga title. It looks like something that could have been possible only on way more powerful PC VGA graphic cards. And unlike many other games that dip their ones and zeros in 3D, it runs perfectly smooth at that. I'd risk saying that Stardust is the best looking Asteroids clone of 1990s on any machine. The earlier mentioned tunnel stage is a technical marvel for the time. Especially that it didn't slow down at all, even on very basic 1MB Amiga 5 and 600 machines. It should come as no surprise though, as developers were also prominent members of Amiga demo scene and clearly knew how to squeeze every bit of power of the aging hardware and all the tricks that were not found in your run of the new programming books. The tunnels featured pre-rendered semi-3D graphics and fast-paced shoot and dodge to survive gameplay. The video doesn't give it the justice, they have to be played to be fully appreciated. The Frost-like optional special mission stages allowed for picking up or losing of extra lives, so that it has to be kept in mind while deciding on an attempt. They can be equally as profitable as devastating to your progress in the game. They play much slower than the rest of the frantic Stardust though, so that sorta makes up for the risk involved. In Stardust, however, player does not face wave of space debris and meteorites only. It's much more interesting than that. There are many different enemy spaceships and each stage seems to be introducing new and more ingenious dangers. Some enemies drop mines, others hunt the player as if he was the face of all evil, and that's not all. There are morphing blobs, snake-like enemies, and not to spoil too much of the discovery, many, many others, each with their own subtleties. Unlike in the Asteroids though, Stardust offers quite a wide selection of weapons with different power levels and even a limited use of shield. In the 70s classic, this would have been an overkill and would have made the game way too easy. In Stardust, there are bare minimum for even a slight chance of survival, because the game is beyond difficult. I understand that it spawned as a 20 year younger answer to classic arcade title, but the challenge it throws at the player is on virtually Dark Souls level, years ahead of its release. And today, replaying it after so many years, sadly it's quite obvious that I cannot competently play it at all. In fact, I've started this review fair, but quite quickly had to resort to trainers to make any progress in the game. And that is not fun. But perhaps that is on me and not on Stardust itself. Perhaps. What is the game's definite and unquestionable drawback though are the controls. They are beyond awful and not help with the aforementioned difficulty at all. Whoever thought of placing ship's acceleration on joystick's up movement and shield on its down was a devil. The devil I say. These two most of the time have to be used together. In fact, shields are completely insignificant if they could only be used while staying stationary. Which I believe this recording proved more than once. And what's worst is that this issue could very easily be negated by either implementing a twin-stick twin-joystick controls or by moving them entirely to keyboard. 
And yeah, I emulated the game and played it on keyboard so shouldn't complain about controls, but seeing how hard it is even now, it brought back crystal clear memories of the horror of what it was being played with a joystick years ago. In the end, how could I rank this quite obvious coding and artistic achievement of a game? Technically it's one of a kind title on the system, gameplay wise it's quite fun too, whenever it does not kill me in seconds, for Souls fans it definitely has that one more attempt quality to it. But for normies, it's so so difficult, and the controls are so badly thought out, I don't know man, it's a tough one. The magazines of yesteryear usually had their scores split up between sound, graphics and gameplay design, I, for whatever reason, have one. The technical and artistic aspects are an easy 10. The gameplay is solid 7 or 8, but that challenge... It's just ridiculous and 3 or 4 at the very best. I mean, I get hard games, I really do, but Stardust seems like it's trying to mock, to ridicule its players, to show that they're not nearly as good at gaming as they thought they are. So, after thinking it through, I have to rate it. Play out of 10. Check it out and judge for yourself. It's worth at least that single try on your side. Thanks a lot for joining me for this video. If you liked it, hit that like and subscribe button below. It helps more than you know. And if you feel especially generous, you might want to consider a small donation. It would help me produce more better content, upgrade the editing rig and my mic, perhaps even get a camera. Details are in the description below. For me, this is all, so have a good one and I'll see you next time.